just a bit of comedy before we get started as it related to the section of video about crafty whores. I try not to pay too much attention to apologist Frank Turek, but recently one of his videos started taking off and I found it to be particularly egregious. So without further ado, why did God make me a lesbian? God made you a lesbian? Not me, Frank Turek. God made Frank Turk a lesbian. No one's a lesbian. What? Excuse me? I mean, some people are lesbians. You, you are. I mean, uh... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Christy Santiago, Apologia, Point, Counterpoint. You met- My response to that whole introduction video that woman person whom gave Adam the apple. What Adam should have done when Eve was offering him the apple. Uh. The Russia investigation. Now he never got to ask the question because the, uh, the White House aide tried to take the microphone off him. And this happened. Now this is the doctored footage that Sarah Huckabee Sanders put out. You. I mean, even this isn't that bad. Just look at this. It's not that bad at all. Even the doctored footage. Why is there such a hoo-ha about this? Play, you bugger. Here's the, here's the thing coming up now. Now. <laughs> okay, so... What Adam should have done? Throw that rebellious cunt ass to the curb watching a video from RT talking about how the US is planning to send 14,000 troops to the border with Iran. It seems like with an embattled president he will start a war with Persia. In order to distract the public and let's watch it and it relevance with scripture from Matthew 24 and Revelation 9 6th trumpet. War with Iran the closer we get to war with Persia and the fulfillment of Daniel 2. The Fourth Kingdom the dive did Roman Empire the Ascender fight against Christ in the Battle of Armageddon. Matthew 24, 6-16 King James Version, KJV. 6 And ye shall hear of wars and rumours of wars, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. 7 For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes, in diverse places. 8 All these are the beginning of sorrows. 9 Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. 10 And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. 11 And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. 12 And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. 13 But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. 14 And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. 15 When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. 16 Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Anyway here is the video this scripture is relevant here. Miss, but we're going to begin tonight with wars and talk of more wars. The U.S. is presently engaged in wars in seven countries. Probably less than 1% of you watching this newscast right now could name them because our media and our government prefer that you don't even know. I not just as a journalist, but as a, as a fellow American, believe that we should know. So here's the list of the countries where we are at war. Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Yemen, Somalia, Libya, and Niger. By the way, we also have more than 850 military bases around the world, some of which look more like cities than bases. Why am I telling you this? Here's why. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that the Trump administration is now considering sending 14,000, 14,000 U.S. soldiers and Marines to the Middle East. The report says that the contingent would also include dozens of ships and more military hardware to surround, essentially, Iran. 
Word is the president will make a final call on whether to send or not send any troops by the end of this month. Of course, soon after this article was making headlines, the Pentagon came out with a, with a denial. There's really so much to chew on with this story, including the potential for an eighth war for our already overextended military, this time with Iran. And the question it behooves us to ask, right, as reporters, will a damaged, impeached president be more apt to engage militarily? Think about it. This is the news with Rick Sanchez, where we believe it's time to do news again. Once again, the saying, at least as I learn from Paco and Adela, <laughs> those would be my parents, by the way, as I'm sure you probably learned from your parents as well, or your teachers, is the following, where there's smoke, there is fire. So here's the point. Just because the Pentagon is saying that it is not sending any more troops to the Middle East doesn't mean it isn't going to happen. It's a move, if proven true, would double the number of U.S. military personnel who have been sent to the region since President Trump started building up troops back in May. But the Pentagon is already disputing the accuracy of that report. In a tweet, Pentagon Press Secretary Alyssa Ferris said, to be clear, the reporting is wrong. The U.S. is not sending 14,000 troops to the Middle East. If this latest troop deployment does come to fruition, the troops will likely be used as a deterrent against Iranian retaliation for recent sanctions under the administration's economic pressure campaign. The U.S. has already increased its military presence in the Gulf. In the past two months, the DOD deployed the USS Abraham Lincoln to the Strait of Hormuz and sent additional weapons and fighter jets to Saudi Arabia, all in a show of force. But on Wednesday, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani appeared to have a change of heart. He said his country would be willing to return to the negotiating table to discuss its nuclear program, but he said that the U.S. would first need to remove all sanctions. On that same day, while meeting with U.S. Secretary Mike Pompeo in Portugal, Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu actually called for more sanctions against Iran and said the recent unrest in that country was an opportunity to, quote, topple the regime. Pompeo echoed that sentiment. We all know what's going on in Iran itself. These are people that are seeking freedom and a reasonable way to live, and they recognize the threat that is posed by the, uh, the kleptocrats that are running the Islamic Republic of Iran. So we talked with our European partners about that and how we can together uh, ensure that we do everything we can uh, to create opportunity for these people who simply want freedom and the chance to live a normal life. Last year, Trump ordered the withdrawal of 2,000 troops from northeastern Syria and agreed to leave half all the counter Islamic State fighters and back Kurdish allies. Also ordered was 200 troops to stay behind in southern Syria to counter Iran-backed forces. This year, he again ordered a full withdrawal of the remaining 1,000 troops from Syria, then backpedaled to leave about half of those troops to help guard the Kurdish-run oil fields. And with the 2020 presidential election mounting and promises of getting troops out of foreign conflicts and avoiding potential new ones, President Trump is convinced threats his aides say Tehran poses need to be checked. For the news with Rick Sanchez, Farron Franzak, RT. Joining us now is uh, Danny Scherzen. He's uh, not only uh, a veteran who has served in Iraq and Afghanistan, he also taught at uh, West Point. Uh, let me ask you questions about this report from uh, the Wall Street Journal. I'm a little troubled by uh, this talk of 14,000 troops and who knows how many ships and how much other hardware going to what is essentially the border of Iran while I'm watching a president who might be damaged by an impeachment process. Do you get my drift? You know, I totally do, Rick. Um, the president, if he's impeached or even if he's on the road to impeachment, is like a cornered animal. I mean, this, this is a dangerous thing because you don't necessarily know what a damaged president will do. Uh, let's think back to Bill Clinton and uh, Monica Lewinsky and mm -hmm. how quickly cruise missiles flowed into Sudan to hit uh, a pharmaceutical factory that was not involved with Al-Qaeda and then also <laughs> into the camps in Afghanistan. It worries me because, unfortunately, in the American body politic, uh, war sells. 
and war presidents tend to, in the short term, right. have their publicity or their favorability rankings go way up. Mm -hmm. Up to 90% in the case of uh, George Bush uh, Sr., but then it kind of end, ended up biting him because he hadn't paid attention to domestic things like our economy. But here's the thing, right? These guys around President Trump, they're in this guy's head, and they're constantly beating that Iran drum. And, you know, after a while, any human being will succumb to that kind of pressure. Do you think, that's tr you think that could be the case? I think it could be. You know, Trump has fired so many different policy advisors, and I'm actually glad he fired most of them. Mm -hmm. I think Mattis had to go. I'm glad Bolton's gone. But inevitably, the Washington establishment, you know, people call it the deep state. I don't like that term, I guess, but I yeah. call it the national security state. These folks have been drumming up a war with Iran for a decade and a half. And I think, and I'm no Trump supporter, as you know, although I get a lot of attacks about that. Uh. I don't think Trump actually wants war with Iran. He showed extraordinary, extraordinary restraint when uh, Iran shot down our drone. But you're correct to say that the longer this is whispered in his ear, how long can we expect a man like Trump, who's not known for his self-control, to, you know, hold out before there is an attack on Iran, which of course would be disastrous. And there's one giant whisperer, right? There's one giant whisperer, if I can coin that phrase, and his name is Bibi Netanyahu. I know he's embroiled in his own problems, but I think Trump would do anything he could to help save Bibi and this would be a helper. Would you, do, do you agree? No, I do. I, I think that, um, look, Bibi and Trump are kindred spirits, okay? Uh, they both have a lot of scandal in their administrations. They're both sort of right-wing ideologues. They've got a lot in common. Um, there is nothing that the three Bs, as I call them, Bibi Netanyahu, MBS in Saudi Arabia and MBZ in the United Arab Emirates. There's nothing the three Bs would like more than an American strike on Iran. And here's my little rule of thumb. If Saudi Arabia and Israel agree on something, we should do the opposite. I mean, if Saudi Arabia and Israel said we should feed the hungry, I'd say let them starve. Now, I'm being facetious, but I think my point right. is illustrative of the reality of how dangerous these two countries are. I think it's, uh, you know, your, your, your statement is one that's not often heard uh, in the media. And, uh, and Danny, I'm glad we have you uh, to share that perspective because it's one that I think more Americans uh, should be hearing these days with wars and talk of wars. Uh, Danny Scherzen, my thanks to you, my friend, for joining us today and sharing your insight with us. Uh, thanks for having me. Revelation 9 KJV 14 saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Fifteen and the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. Sixteen and the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand, and I heard the number of them. Seventeen and thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breast plates of fire and of jacinth, and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. And out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Eighteen by these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. Nineteen for their power is in their mouth, and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents, and their heads, and with them they do hurt. 20 and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold, and silver, and brass, and stone, and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. 21 neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. So it seems we are getting closer to war with regional war with Persia. When the war begins Israel will be the first target by Hezb 011R will rain missiles down on Israel. Angel with a millstone of Revelation 18 will throw rains missiles down on Israel then fulfill Revelation 9 and 16 6th trumpet and vile the invasion of the Galilee. 
prompting the Battle of Armageddon the Fourth Kingdom defeats the reborn divided Roman Empire US EU alliance in the Battle of Armageddon. Fulfilling Daniel II the Fourth Kingdom conquered by the Fifth Kingdom the end of the age and the establishment of the Five Kingdom the Kingdom of God. Anyway the ancient sin of female rebellion it seems like that sin of gender equality. Equality between God and creation the ideology of the devil. Here is a short clip what disgusting beastly woman. Anyway this is part of the rise of the tears the difference between a man loves his wife and she obeys him versus equality between men and women either one dominates the other or separation. So those who in relationship with God versus those who are corrupt and think corruption is purity and purity corruption. Those who do natural role of creation versus those who are corrupt and separate and at enmity with God. Anyway I will leave you with this. Isaiah chapter 3 For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient, the captain of fifty and the honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artificer, and the eloquent orator. And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. When a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thy hand. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be a healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people. For Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord, to provoke the eyes of his glory. The show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous, that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him for the reward of his hand shall be given him. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. The Lord standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people, and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyard, the spoil of the poor is in your houses. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces, and grind the faces of the poor, saith the Lord God of hosts? Moreover the Lord saith, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day 
the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and nose jewels the changeable suits of apparel, and the mantles, and the wimples, and the crisping pins, the glasses, and the fine linen, and the hoods, and the veils. And it shall come to pass, that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink, and instead of a girdle of rent, and instead of well-set hair, baldness, and instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. Thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in the war. And her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground.